Hi, and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some people play American Truck Simulator and stop at all the stop signs and stop at all the red traffic lights. Other people play American Truck Simulator and go through the stop signs and go through the red traffic lights and crash into all the cars. The aim of this video is to have fun and fun only. The great advantage of simulation is you can do things that you can't do in real life. We're going to be taking a flight today from LEPA to LEIB in Ibiza. And what I want to do is show you from the map screen because I want to show you that I have not selected an arrival airport. So there is no GPS information entered from the map screen. So you may be wondering how am I going to find my way from LEPA to LEIB without the GPS? Well, we're going to be using ILS, ADF, VOR, DME and NDB and I'm going to take you on a flight with me and you can see how we go to find our way to Ibiza. Let's click fly and get started. We're looking at our map today. We can see that we are going to go to Ibiza. We are going to be going for runway 24. We've got an NDB here of IZA and a number of 394. We've also got a VOR DME located alongside the runway and that number is 117.8 and we also have an ILS number of 109.5. Now if you're looking for any of this chart information please have a look in the description in the video and you'll be able to find all of this map and information there in the description of the video. Please do have a look there. ADF stands for Automatic Direction Finding. VOR is Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio. We've got DME, Distance Measuring Equipment. And then we've got the NDB. I just want to point out the NDB is the thing on the ground. The ADF is the equipment inside the plane which finds the NDB. That's important to look for because you may get confused and go look at the map and where is all the ADF markers? Well, there won't be any. There will only be the NDB markers on the map. The ADF is actually on the plane itself. We'll jump in our plane and get started. I'm just going to do a cold and dark start so you can see everything. You know I've not missed any steps that you didn't get to see. I'm just going to turn on our two fuel tanks and we're going to turn on all our lights. We can take our parking brake off, just make sure that your throttle is all the way back. And I'm going to push my fro propeller all the way up. The throttle is all the way back. At 0% there. Plane's not going anywhere, so we're all good. There we go. So he's going to push me back and do stuff like that. That's all fine. I'm going to now... Let's have a look at the ADF. So down here we've got the ADF. And we've also got an ADF up here that we can click. I'm going to show you how to enter it in up here. But whatever we enter up here will also change down here. So I'm just going to show you how you can do that. If we left click here on ADF DME, you'll notice we've got a flashing number. Now to change that number, we can use the small wheel here under FMS. Turn the wheel, hover above it and use the mouse wheel and you notice the number will change. So I'll just change it to 111. Now to move between the numbers, I'm using the big wheel. To change the number, I'm using the small wheel. And I'm just hovering above it and using the mouse wheel. Okay, so then I'll change it to the 4. We're using the big wheel and then using the mouse wheel to change this to the 1. If I wanted to make this the active number, I've got to first say this is the number I want by pushing enter. And then I want to swap it to the other side and push enter again. Now in this case, we actually do want 394, but just to show you, you can see the 111 here on the left and the 394 on the right. The active number is this number. So if I go and click on enter again, you'll notice it's now over here. So this side is now the active number. It's always this side that's the active number. And you'll notice down here it's swapped. 394, that's the active number. Okay. We're also going to change the DME mode. So we'll swap over to that by clicking here and then we'll swap over to our um, other one and then we'll change it 
to nav 2 and then we'll get out of there by just clicking in here and it's gone. You can check it's all okay by just clicking it again. But that's all good. Then we're going to go up here for the nav 1 and the nav 2. I'm going to put the ILS number onto nav 1. So I'm going to change this number to 109.5. So just using the big wheel to hover above and change the big number to 109 and the small number I need to make that a 5, so I'm just hovering above the small number, make it a 5. It's not the active number, the number on this side is the active number, so we push here to swap it over, and now that's the active number. We're going to swap to nav 2, to get to nav 2 we click here. There's no words, but it says when you're hovering above it in that dialog box toggle, so we left click that and we'll swap over. We're going to change it to the VOR GME number. This is this number over here, the 117.8. So I'm going to change this now to 117. And then the small 90 down to 8. And we're going to swap it over to the other side to make it active. And we've got 117.8. Now we can go down to here, the PFD. And I'm going to left click once here. I'm just going to put the wind information up, so option 3. On left click, we've got the wind information, fantastic. Click back. Now we're going to change the DME or get the DME information up, so that's going to come up. It's going to bring us the information on the N, uh, on the VOR DME, that's what this is, the 117.8. And then we're going to bring on the BRG1, but we're going to change that to NAV1. So that's going to be having the ILS information when it gets that. The BRG2, we're going to change to ADF. So you've got ADF over here, no data at the moment. But you'll notice once we get up in the sky, this will get populated. And when we get closer to our destination, this will also get populated. And when we get really close, we'll pick up the ILS signal and then we'll get this one. The VOR DME should be seen around about 37 nautical miles around about that. So if you're giving this a go yourself, that's what you're looking for. But you'll be able to see that as we go along in this video. Okay, I think we're all okay here. Only thing I might want to change this before we take off is I want to change this number here to 7,000 or so. So I'm going to change the altitude select, I'm just hovering above it, and I'm going to change that number to 7,000. Hover above it and use the mouse wheel. Got 7,000, we're good to go. So, a parking brakes off, I'm going to just jump to the external view. I'm not totally going to follow its um, recommendation. I just want to get us in the sky. So we'll hover ourselves out this way. We can bring our flaps out a little bit with F7 on the keyboard. Keep coming around. towards that runway. We'll stop about here just for a moment and we'll have a little look at our map. Got one plane there and another plane coming in somewhere. So you can notice here on the map we've got no GPS information telling us to go from here to here. None of that is on the map so we've got to find our way ourselves today. Um, do we have a plane coming in? I'm not sure but we will um, be playing for fun today, so we just want to get ourselves in the sky. So I'll head over towards this and get ourselves in the sky super quickly. I don't think we'll be in this way, we'll be gone. I'll just let our speed get up to... 80, and we'll pull back, and we can maybe turn left, and we're away. We're out of this way. Now, we'll start climbing, and we'll notice down here eventually the ADF will populate with some information. You can see ADF, no data at the moment. I'm 
And there we go, we've got 394. But the interesting thing is we've now got a little bit of information on here. So if we have a look, we've got a little picture of the house on top of there with an arrow. We need to get this white triangle and put it on top of that house. Now we can actually use the autopilot to help us. So if I left click over here on autopilot, and then I go over to here, I can see that, I need to move our heading indicator over towards the top of the house. So I'm going to use this wheel up here, and I'm going to scroll it around until it's above the house. So now you can see we're pretty close to the top of the house. I keep scrolling it a little bit more, right on top of the house. And then I'm going to click on the heading button to turn the heading indicator button on. The plane will now turn for me and get it above that. Now we're not using GPS in any way, we're using the ADF here for our navigation. Altitude is still rising. Um, I can click on VS mode and just click a, an amount that I want it to go up by. So you can increase like at that speed up to the 7,450 or so, that's fine. There we go. And up we go, we can see we're away. We put in the flaps if we haven't already. We're going to be leaving this town down here. And that's the airport we took off from. And we're heading off in that way into the distance. But we know where to go because we're looking here at this little hat. Now I really like full flight videos because I can sort of play them on a second monitor while I am traveling. And then I can see how I compare if I want to have a go at it myself as well. But for the moment, we'll use our Xbox controller and we'll just have a little look outside. The next thing we are looking for is down here, this to populate with information. So this whole side will start to be the new information coming up. At the moment, we've got no data and no data for both. Also up here, you'll notice the GPS, there's no data. It's going to have no data for the whole flight on this flight. We never entered any information, so we're using other methods and GPS to do this travel. So don't be intimidated if you've never done a flight without the GPS. Um, it is possible. And you'll notice even if I click down here, GPS tracking, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah, so it's not like there's a line or something if you're wondering. That's just going to be following our plane. So if we drift off over here somewhere, we can turn it on and we can find our plane again. To help explain that one. Okay. So we will jump outside and have a little look. Very cool plane, this one. Handles quite uh, interestingly different. We've got more lights on than we need here, obviously, but I'm just doing it for fun. It looks a lot better for gaming purposes. We're also running with uh, very few clouds. This video was made at a time when the 3070, 3080 and 3090 was not yet released. So this is currently running on a 1080 Ti. I will try to upgrade when the cards get released, but at the moment we are waiting for those cards. So we're trying to do a recording where I can record a high frame rate by just having islands and a lot of water. which we're achieving a little bit throughout this video. We can faintly see something in the distance out there, but not much more than that at the moment. We'll jump back in our plane. Engines are roaring at the moment. So, if we have again a little look at our map, what we will need to do is 
as we're coming closer, we'll need to get down to 2,200. And then at the NDB, the same, we need to be at 1,400. So at 1,400, we will then be above ISA and we will need to be on a course of 240 degrees to be lining up with the runway. Now we'll be able to put on the flight director in the plane, so not the autopilot in terms of the plane controlling the movement of the plane for us, but it will give us guidance on what we should be doing as a pilot if we need to go up and down or left and right with the bank. Now the, the, the actual descent with the glide slope will be 2.9 degrees, 91 degrees, we can see that. And we'll be going down towards the runway from that NDB, from 1400 all the way down to the runway. It's going to give us that guidance to keep us on the glide slope all the way down. Now this sort of landing is quite interesting because you do get to be a bit more hands-on. You do actually get to fly the plane. Um, but it's also a little bit uh, interesting because you can also do it if we had bad weather. So we could have done this flight in conditions where we couldn't see outside or rain or there was a lot of cloud cover. And we could just be doing it by looking at our instruments over here. Just keep in mind, when you do put the plane in a decline to get down to 1400, it will gain speed. And we definitely want to keep it out of the red and white zone. So just be aware of that. You will need to bring the throttle back. I'm just going to adjust my throttle back even a little bit more already. The next information I'm looking for is down here, the no data. Now, what we can set up is I can set up our altitude. So I can start to put in 1400. Because we know that's the altitude I'm going to want to be at eventually. So I'll just put that in there for the moment. We won't start declining for another few seconds. We have a long way to go at the moment. Our ADF is down here. That is what's guiding us at the moment. And click back to go out. ADF information again is in here. Which we've now shown you. And you've also understood, hopefully, how to change the nav information. You'll notice there is nothing for both of those at the moment. The first one we will get is the VOR DME information. So that's going to be, at the moment, the way we've got it set up, the top number here, the NAV2, which is the NAV2 here. And that's the VOR DME. This is the sensor next to the runway. There is no distance information for the ADF. So we have no distance on the ADF, only on the VOR DME when we get it. And then we will also get some distance information on the ILS when we get closer. These two will be very close, but they will be different numbers. We can leave that on VOR1. The VOR1 will turn by itself when we get a signal. So... The main thing for us at the moment is just keeping our heading in line with that, with the ADF. That's what we need to be doing. You can always see what the current information is on the plane up here. So we know we're in heading mode. We know the autopilot is engaged and we're at altitude hold of 7,000 feet. Once we get that 37 nautical miles uh, come up here, for NAV2, we will uh, begin our descent for sure. That will give us enough time to get down to the the uh, the point of 1400 in time. So if you do this flight yourself, that should give you a guidance on when to start descending. You can fairly comfortably do that. All our lights are on, everything's going good. We ran with 50% fuel today on this flight. If you need to adjust it as you go, just keep moving the heading around. 
So I'm just going to go slightly to the right. And then it'll keep us on that path. We can see the sort of the background of the island out there on the map. And you can see now what I meant by a lot of water. So hopefully this keeps our frame rate high. And just begin to see the island out there now. The island we came from will get smaller and smaller. And then where we're heading to is going to get bigger as we get closer. And we've got beautiful weather today. Now what's really different compared to an ILS landing is normally with an ILS landing we would have to click down here to change the CDI at this point. And with this mode we don't have to, we've got all that set up. The other thing you'd normally have to do with an ILS landing is you'd have to click the approach button. With this type of landing we never have to click the approach button, okay? So that's another difference. The only thing we are going to have to click is the autopilot to disengage the autopilot. We will have to keep adjusting the heading and we could be flying this manually if we wanted at the moment, just manually flying it, keeping it at 7,000 7, and keeping ourselves on the on the top of the ADF, but we don't need to. We can use the autopilot to do that for it and give us a, a bit of a rest. We're getting about halfway. I can very slowly begin a descent, so I'm going to click VS and just push down slightly. We'll begin to we'll begin the descent lightly, which will help. Um, we'll try and watch. I want to capture the moment so that you can see when the um, Nav 2 gets the data and how far out, but it should be about 37. So we'll see how we go on this flight. Coming towards halfway now. We know everything's pretty safe outside. We're very gradually coming down. You have got a stop clock which you can use and you can turn a stop clock on. Just want to be giving an eye on that throttle like I was saying because we are coming down. We're not coming down very steeply but we do want to make sure we don't go into that red and white zone. Pretty good at the moment. Just keep that white triangle in the right place, turning at 237 degrees, no data at the moment. And when we get to IZA, we will then make sure we're turning towards 240. Now one thing to note, this little symbol for the ADF will spin around when we go over the top of it to say it's behind us and then Obviously this symbol will be up here and the little house symbol will be that way, saying it's in that direction as we fly over the top of it. So it'll keep giving us the direction and we'll see it spin around as we fly over the top of it, but it will not give us distance. Both the VORDME, this one here, and the ILS will give us distance. And we'll also have um, some letters after the 109.50 when it has a signal. So we'll know it has a signal when it has some letters filled in here. Beginning to see an island out there, I think. So now we can see that there. That's where we're heading. Again, if you're looking for the charts for this flight today, you can have a look in the description of the video. I'll be putting in the description of the video the charts for today. And in that, you can see the ILS information, the ADF information, which you can find here, the 394. 
and also the VOR DME information, which you can see down here, the 117.8. We know about the 1400 feet because of here, and we know we're going to be using that to go down to the runway. One final thing we can prepare, up here we've got a button called Flight Director. So if we turn Flight Director on, that's going to give us the guidance to go down to the runway, which will hand fly. It'll first give us guidance here, so we know left and right, and then it will have a little G symbol come up the top here with a green diamond, and that green diamond will come towards us. We're wanting to keep that green diamond right in line with this, with our black marker here. That's what we're trying to do. And we're going to be doing that just with our hand flying. So it's a lot of fun because you do get to hand fly it in and keep it on the markers. Keeps it a little bit more challenging for me because I've got to try and use the mouse to show you guys plus the joystick plus the throttle. So there's a, there's a few things there for me to try and do and manage. I wouldn't normally have to look at the mouse quite so much if I was just flying for myself. But I want to show you a little bit zoomed in if I can so that you guys can, can see what's going on here. You'll notice just now the NAV2 has got information, 33.2 nautical miles. It should have come up around 36, it probably did. And the DME is now populated. So we're definitely going to keep that descent happening. As I said, we're going to start descending, and we certainly have done that. I don't know if we're descending quick enough to get all the way down, so we may increase that now we're past that point. 400, 500 is a little bit better. Thirty-one point six nautical miles out. We can see the island just in front of us now, and this is the marker we're flying at. We're aiming for this at the moment. I said A. We fly over the top of it. That little blue symbol will swap around, come around to the other side. Now, when we get the ILS information and this gets some letters up here this green symbol will start moving. It will start giving us the information we need. Probably be to the left a little bit at the moment, but we'll see how we go as we get closer. The first priority though is not to follow the green line. It's to follow this ADF. We want to hit that ADF first. Once we're at the ADF, then we can switch. We can turn the autopilot off and we'll switch and we'll start following the localizer in. It will also change, so it will no longer say VOR1, it will say LOC1. We don't have to click anything to make that happen at this point. The, the only button we're clicking now is over here, the autopilot. We'll have to disengage the autopilot. Have another little look outside. So we can see that's where we were. And then this is where we're heading to. And hopefully if you give this a go yourself, you should get a pretty good frame rate with uh, this one. So now we can see about 26 nautical miles. Uh, we've got the information for the ILS. We'll notice up the top here, we've got some letters. And when we got the letters, we also got the information populating down here. Now, as I said, we will have LOC come up, so you can see LOC, and it's slightly to the left at the moment. But again, don't worry about this too much. You just want to be keeping yourself going towards that ADF. I'll have a little look outside just to see how far away we are. There we are. Yeah, just keep flying at that ADF.
Should be around 240. This will come closer to us as we go closer. But once we overfly that, we want to hit that 240. Now we've got some more information. We can see up here we've now got glide slope. So we're at 3000, but um, that will come down towards us as we get towards that. NDB. The ILS is the green line here and the ILS is also the G here with the green. The autopilot won't take us down. We will be doing that ourselves. The heading indicator is the little blue dot at the top. The ADF is the green house, the blue house symbol in the back here with the point. And we can see the VOR DME information down here, just giving us range, 18.1 nautical miles. That combined with the ADF means we've got a very good idea that we're on track. We can see the runway out there at the moment. It'll get closer as we uh, get closer to the ADF. You can see the buttons I've got selected at the moment, vertical sync. Now that should swap over any moment because we're almost down towards the 1400 now. Decreasing at 600 feet per minute, 1700. We can begin to bring our speed back a little bit. And coming up to 1400. It will settle and it will swap off VS mode. And you can see up here it's changed to altitude hold mode at 1400. So we're exactly where we need to be as far as the altitude for the NDB now. Now we're just waiting for hitting that point and we'll turn off the autopilot and then hand flyer in. Once you start hand flying, you then are looking for the green line and you're looking at this. That's the two indicators. You're not worrying about this blue symbol anymore. It's going to swap and turn around to the back of us. So all we're doing is we're hand flying, looking at this dot and that dot. Green dot's above us, we need to climb. The green dot is below us, we need to descend. And then in this case, it's to the left of us, so we need to go left slightly. And if it's over here, we need to go to the right slightly. So that means left or right. And then this is ascend or climb or descend. You can notice how it's come a little bit closer to us as we've got closer. We could push to the right slightly, but it's not going to be too big a problem. We'll have a little look at our window. We can see that there. So let's change it now to the 240.
we should be coming in pretty close now. The 240, 241, bring it back to 240. If I can, or 241. There we go. It'll get a little bit more sensitive as we get closer. There we go. But we're pretty close within a degree. We're close enough to certainly be able to take over and uh, start hand flying it and following the other instruments. Knows it wants to go to the right ever so slightly now. So while we've still got an autopilot, we'll try and follow that a little bit. ADF is slightly to the right as well. So just pushing it that little bit right. It'll bring it over and then we'll suddenly go left. There's the runway. So get ready. We'll try and find a good view. Hopefully that will do. Now you can see down here, the glide slope's coming down to us. You can see NGB is swapping around, the ADF information. It's coming behind us, so just quickly, you can see we're flying right over that now. It now should be behind us, and you can see it's pointing behind us, okay? So this is the time when we're going to swap it over. We're going to turn off our autopilot, and now we're going to use this information to land our plane. So I need to point the nose just slightly down at the moment. If I can zoom in and use the mouse and everything all at once, you can see that there I'm catching the glide slope. I need to go left slightly, it's saying. I need to push down slightly. So I'm doing those two things. But our speed's going way up, so we need to cut that back. And that's what you're doing. You're hand flying it in. So this is the fun part, basically. We're pretty okay at the moment. Need to go up. We're back on glide slope. And then follow it down. Need to go left. A little bit too low. And then right, hard right. And then straight. Keep pushing the nose down. We need to follow that glide slope down. We're quite lined up here at the moment. We're on the glide slope. Just pulling up now. And at some point, you can just look at the lights on the side. So two red, two white is what we're aiming for. And if you can just hand fly it in from this point, then you don't have to worry about the glide slope information down below so much. You can just hand fly it in. You can use the wheel brakes, we're pretty slow as we landed. And we can taxi off. I don't think that would normally taxi off there, but we're quite quick. And we'll come over towards the uh, terminal buildings. If we can find a cool terminal building to park in front of maybe. Some fuel over there. I don't really need fuel. How about we go over towards that tower?
Is that guy giving us guidance? He might be. We can do that. We haven't got any blue markers on the ground, so we're just... Okay. Well, I want to go to work to that end of that line there, so. There we go. For fun. Cool. So that's that. We can put a parking brake on. And we can just go over some of the steps that we used today. So we set up our ADF information. So we did that over here under ADF DME. We went into here and we changed our number using these two wheels. So I'm just gonna change until we have the right one. And then we're going to enter it on that one. And we can make it active or not active. If we wanna change it, we can hover above it and just change the number. So in this case, let's say we wanna make it 394. So I'll just scroll it through to um, free. Then move the bigger wheel to change the number to here. We're going to make it a 9. And then the big wheel. And then change that to a 4. And we've got it there. And we can just swap between them by enter and enter. We'll swap it over. They're both the same number now. So it won't matter. The DME mode was in 2. I selected the DME mode 2. That was just for the VOR DME which came up here. You can do it the other way around if you want. But... Um, I've just done it this way and we can take that away. Then of course we could change our navigation information up here. So we could change nav2 to the 17 by using the big wheel. We can change the small number. We're just changing that to 80. And I can swap between them by clicking here. I can change it to 109. Of course, keep in mind to, to make it the active number um, they're both the same at the moment, but to swap them to the other side, you click this button here. It swaps it over, and you, you're good to go there. So that's sort of the setup of the controls. So when we were got up into the sky, I turned autopilot on, and I turned it on heading mode. So I found where the ADFS signal was coming from. I used the heading indicator switch here to move that little blue onto where the blocks was for the house of the ADF, matched it up. And then the plane switched and got us to that direction. Just with the autopilot and that. I used VS mode. You can use FLC mode. But I used VS mode just to get us up to the 7000. Which are pre-configured as an altitude. And then we descended back down to 1400 to match where we had to be. So we did this flight today. We came in. Went over the IZA. And then we switched off the autopilot. And we hand flew it down from the NDB all the way down to the runway and then you can see the landing. Um, but this is a lot of fun. Please don't be intimidated. Um, you can do a landing without using the GPS and you can do a small flight like this. There's many different opportunities to learn more and this is one of the easier ones. So if you want to just get started and see how you go with ILS, ADF, VOR, DME and NDB, this could be something for you to give a go and try. We'll turn our engine off now. We will shut it down. We'll show you a very quick way of shutting it down. Um, I'm just going to cut the mixture. I'm going to turn this and this off. And I'm going to flick a few switches over here. And that's going to be a very quick way of shutting it down. Turn those two off and that's it. We're done. I can put 
we'll make sure the handbrake was already on. Um, I just have to put the yoke back because that's cool. Of course, you wouldn't need to do that in real life because the yoke would always be there. But we're in a simulation, so certainly that is the cool thing about simulation. We can do things that you can't do in real life. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please do consider subscribing. I really appreciate all the subscriptions. You can also comment and like on the video. I hope you found this video helpful or entertaining. Thank you very much for watching. I look for you in the next video. So until the next video, have a great day and bye for now.